So I gotta ask you the obligatory smart guy reboot question. Like I came up with a really fresh take on how, how we can, you know, bring that back with the whole cast. And Is there anyone special in Taj's life? You know what? No. And it's like that for a reason. We have a, 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 a FaceTime uh, thing that we do with all the siblings called Sibling Love. Nobody's safe in the group chat. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited about Welcome Matt. It's got a pretty unconventional and unique plot. I really think you need some professional help, sweetheart. I don't understand what's happening. You suffer from agoraphobia, which is a fear of going outside due to trauma and loss. <laughs> describe the movie to people. Matthew Hillard is a writer director who gains a little bit of fame and recognition from a movie he did called Life's a Beach. So in the process of gearing up for his next film, there's a lot of pressure on him to sort of meet the expectations that the first film met. He goes through a very traumatic experience and we find out what that experience is in the film and it sort of de derails him completely. It's really funny, but it's also pretty intense that time. So I think it's got a great balance of the comedy and the drama. Some moments you're cracking me up, you know, stuffing Chinese food into your face, and then other moments you absolutely gutted me and, and, and made me emotional and made me tear up. So what was it like for you being a part of a movie that, that feels really demanding? Wow, thank you, thank you for saying that. Um, that means a lot because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the role. Because, uh, you know, A, what it's speaking up and what it's bringing awareness to, but also it's a chance for people who may know me already to see me in a different light. It was very demanding in, in, all, in all areas, but that's why I do what I do, right? There's no film. There's just you in this house afraid to go outside and shit happen. I know that this film is a work of fiction. It's very exaggerated, but you yourself, someone who's been in the public eye, you've had a lot of success. Have you ever been compelled to take a step back? Maybe take a break and, and yeah. say, Hollywood, gotta pump the brakes for a minute here. I do that often and I, and, and you know, I think it's good for me and for my mental health, for my, you know, family life, whatever, to step back and take breaks. After I finished Baby Daddy, it kind of disappeared for a little bit and now here I am. And I think that's healthy. And I think it helps to sort of separate the Hollywood glitz and glamor from real life. I would be remiss to sit here and not talk a little bit about the past and the projects that we grew up watching you doing and, and still are so beloved and cherished today. Um, I'm curious, when you go out, what is the number one role or project that people tend to approach you about or recognize you for? It's probably just a combination of smart guy and full house with like, a, like a, you'd be surprised at the amount of Kim Possible fans I run into. The Kim Possible fans are just hardcore, man. They just, they love it. I cannot afford this jacket. I know. I pulled up your bank account, you're broke. So, Taj, of course, I gotta ask you the obligatory smart guy reboot question. I want you in school. Why? If I take one year off, I'll still be four years ahead. Do you want to revisit TJ Henderson? There's been lots of Zoom meetings and talks about this, so we, we do have the ball rolling on it. It's just a matter of, uh, of, uh, of time and timing. But um, we do have, you know, the, the possible home for it. We do have a writer. Um, and I came up with a really fresh take on how, how we can, you know, bring that back with the whole cast and, and something that is fresh and new, but also something that, you know, the, the diehard fans will still, uh, you know, get that nostalgic uh, aspect of it as well. So I just, I gotta go through the questions now. Who's on board? Who from the cast is gonna return? <laughs> in the perfect world, you will see the whole cast. The person that's been in the most contact with me about it and me with him is probably John Marshall Jones, who played my father in, in the show. Um, and obviously, I, I was just working with Essence on, on, on the new pilot that we're both in. So you, you gotta give me a little tease. Where are we gonna find TJ in 2021? Um, I'm treading lightly here. <laughs> Come 
Oh, we're old friends. It's just two old friends having a gag. We do, you know. we do go way back, don't we? Okay, let me see. Let me see. You will find TJ just as he was in the original of Fish Out of Water, right? He was uh, sort of exploring a new world uh, for himself. You'll find him in that same situation, but somewhere else. TJ the is old enough thing to is bring TJ. help. <laughs> yeah, yes, he, you, you, that's not a problem. You'll be able to see him maybe have a, you know, a tequila on the rock. You know? There you go. Okay, before we move off of Smart Guy completely, I just have to go back to one of my favorite episodes. Oh my God, it's Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child is here. Well, um, who brought in the kid? Because that's who we're looking at. <laughs> no, he's so cute. You could just eat him Good for baby. dessert. <laughs> Grab a spoon, girls. <laughs> what do you remember about filming that episode? Everything. <laughs> I had the biggest uh, crush on Latavia um, and, and Latoya and uh, all of them. Let's be real. <laughs> Not Beyonce and Kelly? Come on. Like some, I think it was it Latoya. I, you know, you know, you got to find that one, you know, and I found my one on set. You know what okay. I'm saying? So, but I mean, Your one was Latoya. My one was Latoya. And, you know, to be able to show my tap dancing skills, you know, with Beyonce, I mean, I know she still got to remember it. I know, I know she do. I, I have to commend you, and I'm sure you hear this all the time, that you are just so level-headed, you're grounded. We only hear wonderful, positive things about you and your family. And, um, and I'm curious if you think that has anything to do with the fact that, you know, you took a little break from acting, you went to regular high school, you played football, you went to college. You think that that helped you avoid, you know, the typical pitfalls of, of childhood stardom? I most definitely think so. I wouldn't have done those things if it weren't for our amazing parents. You know, I got to give it all to them. I was going back to regular school, public school, after I was on set, you know what I mean? So I think that helped me stay normal in a sense. Um, and to realize that, you know, it was just a job. It wasn't like a complete, um, it, it wasn't my life. It was a job that I did that I'm very thankful I still get to do, but I went home afterwards and hung out with my friends and went to football and track practice. and had homework, just like all the other kids do. So I definitely think that was a, a, a huge, a huge reason why I um, am somewhat normal. You're still so young and you've achieved so much. I'm curious, what is on the Taj Mori bucket list? I, I wrote a screenplay and <sighs> this summer we're gearing up um, to go into production on that and it'll be my directorial debut. So I'm... Uh, I'm very, very excited. It's a blend of Get Out and Skeleton Key. And that's, that's, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> There's a lot of teas in the house. There is a lot of teas. Taj, Tia, Tamara. So when I'm trying yeah. to call one of them, sometimes I'll call him Tave, sometimes I'll call him She'll Tamara. run down the whole list <laughs> like, like <laughs> every <laughs> name <laughs> in the family, <laughs> just until one sticks. It's, it's so beautiful to watch Tia and her family and Tamara and her family and your brother Tavier just got married. So yeah. I have to ask, is there anyone special in Taj's life? You know what? No. And it's like that for a reason. I do want to get married and have, have children with, with, with a beautiful wife to be at some point, but I'm not in a rush also. Um, I also want to make sure that my mind is right mentally, that, that I've taken enough time to to uh to give myself the love that I need to be able to uh to give it to 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 that special lady in the future but I do want to be a dad at some point I love kids what what qualities are most important to you when you're looking for a partner faith um uh I I was I was just explaining to someone there's nothing sexier to me than like a boss woman, you know? So I'd like to, that Jay-Z, Beyonce sort of thing, you know, where you both are bosses in your mm -hmm. own right. Confidence, faith, um, funny. I'm, I'm, I, I, I look at myself as a funny dude and I like to laugh. I'm also really chill. So like, 
maybe not so much on the high maintenance side. <laughs> you know, and, and just on the topic of family, I have to tell you, I spoke with both of your sisters separately throughout quarantine. And in October, Tamara told me that she still hadn't seen Tia in person. Was- I still haven't seen her physically. Um, no, I, I, I Wait, haven't. after six months? No, because I live in Napa. Is this the longest you've ever gone in life? Without- um, yeah. I'm curious, now that we're here in March, have you had your opportunity to have your family reunion with Tamara yet? Yes, I have. I was able to see my sister. Um, and then also for Easter, the day before Easter, we will finally be able to get the whole family together to see each other. What was it like for you to be there with your whole family after the womb mates had to spend so much time apart? I love that, the womb mates. It was honestly really beautiful. My brother and I joke around all the time because when they're together, no one else matters. It's <laughs> just... Exactly. <laughs> Hey, hey, Tia, Tamira, uh, I got a question. No, and they're just, I know, right? And then that's the blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, did they not hear me? I'm right here. Um, but it was beautiful. We have a a, 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 a FaceTime uh, thing that we do with all the siblings called Sibling Love. And, and we, all four of us get on FaceTime together and we try to do it as often as possible. We have group chats on text and we have a group chat on Instagram. We have our FaceTime group. That, so. We're always, you know, we're always, you know, together, but it was beautiful seeing them. And God, they miss, like, you could just tell how much they, like, they miss their sister, you know? And it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. What goes down in that group chat? Oh, it goes down. It goes down, you know? It goes down. Um, we're all jokesters, so we all, we all kind of, like, we get on each other in the, in the, in the fun way, you know what I mean? Um, nobody's safe in the group chat. I'll say that. (laughs) For example, I posted a picture of all of us um, on a FaceTime uh, not too long ago, and Tia was like crying in it, but like, (laughs) I didn't care. Like, Tia's crying, Tamira's like on the verge of tears, and Tavia and I are just laughing hysterically at the fact that Tia's crying. So that's what I mean. No one's safe. Like, you're going to get, you'll get got. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, for sure, for sure. No sibling is safe here.